In this video, I'll show you how to make two abstracted landscapes in acrylics using a fun three-step process. And my watercolor paper is divided by a piece of masking tape because I do want to try and make two landscape paintings, two variations of the same theme. My colors are burnt sienna, burnt umber, uh, turquoise, a uh, Prussian blue and titanium white. And I find that complementary colors work really well. Kind of these earthy uh, colors combined with some uh, beautiful bright uh, colors like turquoise and uh, other bright blues. So, but first off, let's start by loosening up. And uh, I thought, not what better way to try and loosen up than use some nice. Uh, flowing and very wet paint. Uh, if you have some acrylic inks or some fluid acrylics, I would definitely go ahead and use that. But to uh, level the playing field so everybody can join us, I'm going to try and make my own fluid acrylic paints using some of this uh, regular acrylic paints. And I'm going to choose this um, burned umber that I have here, placing it in my uh, little container here. And I'm going to add some water. If you have some acrylic mediums, that would work really well also. But just to make sure that everybody can actually have um, a chance at doing this, I'm just going to be using plain old water. Uh, hopefully you can pick this up. I'm going to try and let the light shine down here so you can see. The consistency now is very thick. It's like a gravy that has been cooling off and is starting to stiffen. So I would like it to be a little bit more fluid. So I'm going to add a little bit more water here. Just some droplets. And I'm going to mix it up. Yeah, the consistency now is starting to be pretty good. It might actually be a little bit thin. It's a little bit thicker than water now, I would say. And you want to mix really well to make sure that it's uh, all the paint has been uh, dissolved evenly in the so, water, like this. So I want to start out with some uh, very fluid paint. And now that I've uh, made that, I'm just going to put this aside over here for a little bit. And I'm going to start by wetting the paper with a big brush here. Um, just kind of randomly on the paper here. And using my very large brush here, I'm gonna take some of this very fluid paint. Let me see here. Just going to test it over here. Yeah, it looks pretty good. So the trick here is try and be brave and uh, use some big strokes and see how nicely the paint is kind of uh, spreading around on the page itself. See how this kind of creates some uh, wonderful uh, and interesting uh, marks. Going to dilute it even more here and just add a little bit of the same color into the, the sky area. Start off being very brave using your fluid paint and your large brush. After that, you can kind of start to look for different opportunities of things that uh, kind of happen uh, maybe randomly or spontaneously, and you can try and adjust those. So uh, I'm just going to make sure there aren't any really um, sharp edges in the sky here because I want to kind of keep it nice and loose. Notice how the paint down here is kind of separating and uh, making these very lovely, lovely um, marks into the texture of the paper itself. This is actually fine grain paper. So if you were using even a rougher grain of paper or canvas, 
this would, sh would show up even uh, more than that. Of course, if you want to add some more of this very fluid paint, you can take it back and, and add a little bit more. Always try and be brave and start out with the uh, big marks uh, and big areas of colors if you can. Um, this will allow you also to be open to surprises that uh, might happen, like uh, these uh, wonderful granulating effects uh, that actually happened here that I wasn't expecting and I certainly didn't plan it at all. I'm not going to be doing the fluid paint in the little container this time. I'm just going to make it really nice and fluid here on my disposable palette. Let me get a little bit of black paint here and just put in this. And also maybe a little bit of this burnt umber. Put these paper clips on here because the, the paper was bending up quite a bit. Let me just adjust a little bit with the paper towel here. Maybe I'll put in a sort of a uh, horizon line here in the back. Soften some of those edges using a clean brush with water on it. Okay, I don't want too many details at this stage, so I'll hurry on to the next one. Maybe just add a little bit of dark paint. And there's a cat here. And a little bit of dark paint here in the, in the foreground. Just to um, keep things uh, loose, I am going to introduce a bit, little bit of pencil marks. Um, if you've seen some of my videos before, you know I really like to uh, introduce uh, pencil marks just uh, I like the combination of using different uh, media in the same painting and the, the contrasting um, expression that uh, these things uh, allow is is wonderful I think so if you don't like pencil or you don't like adding it don't do it or choose something else perhaps so it's all about playing here, allowing yourself to play, allowing yourself to test things out. Um, that's why I'm using this uh, piece of paper and dividing it, uh, dividing it into two um, pieces, two uh, paintings, so that I, I can play. Um, and I definitely suggest you do the same. You could even divide it into four uh, paintings here and uh, and play with that. Add some turquoise here. It's a little bit dark, this turquoise. So I'm going to lighten it up with some white. Use it. I'm going to, of course, be covering up some of these uh, pencil marks, but that's okay. I can always add some more later if I feel like it. Might be a bit uh, intimidating using a big brush like this because look, the edges isn't um, very crisp, but that's actually what I like. So uh, if you find it uh, difficult to loosen up and uh, paint uh, in a less rigid way, uh, getting a uh, old painter's brush like this uh, from the hardware store is a, is a great choice. So this is definitely inspired by the, the snowy, very snowy weather we've been having here lately in uh, northern Denmark. So it has taken me uh, years to uh, paint this loose and I am uh, still trying to practice and uh, it actually I find that uh, it's something I need to train often to, to remain loose in my uh, expression. So uh, if you don't get this right away, please don't give up. You just have to keep trying and, and practicing.
work up here in the sky. Maybe there's more snow on the way. Big woody pencils here and see. Notice I'm not holding it uh, being very tight. I'm kind of holding it midway or at the end here because I, I want to stay loose and expressive. And uh, this might take some uh, getting used to, certainly. Um, but uh, the more you practice, the more you get the hang of it. I just know it. I know it's a process, definitely. Um, it's not something that uh, happens uh, overnight. Um, and it might be uh, small incremental steps uh, loosening up your, uh, your painting style. But uh, just know that uh, you'll get there. You will get there. It's time to introduce some of that beautiful pink that uh, was in the clouds this morning. And I found this uh, Kinacridone uh, Crimson that I find gives really lovely pinks uh, when it's uh, lightened with white. Uh, this is going to be quite potent because this is artist quality color. So it's highly pigmented. I don't need a lot of color. Look at this beautiful pink color. Oops. Yeah. I'm not really much of a winter person uh, because it's so dark in the winter here uh, in Denmark. But uh, you do get some incredible colors in winter. If you... Um, are interested in uh, painting expressive and looser landscapes. I do want to give you something. I want to uh, give you my free guide called Five Proven Ways to Loosen Up Your Painting Style because uh, it's something I really, I have it uh, right next to me uh, here on my desk as well. And it's advice that I use every day uh, myself to remind myself to become looser and stay loose in my in my painting style so uh, i want to uh, give you my very best advice and it's all in this free guide so if you're interested in that please see the link below and um, to go and get your copy of the free guide i uh, i definitely recommend it i use it practically every day or at least i glance uh, it's hung up on my studio wall, so I glance at my tips just to remind me. So uh, it's uh, my uh, best tips and advice that I've been kind of uh, picking up the last 25 uh, so years of, of painting. So grab your copy and I hope it will be uh, useful to you. But I want to just... A little bit on the one up here, a little bit too dark. If, uh, if I can give you any advice uh, whatsoever, it's just please uh, keep practicing uh, and uh, exploring. Even if it's just on smaller paintings like this. Uh, and don't put yourself, uh, don't put a lot of pressure on yourself because, well, I don't know, pressure is not really something that's useful for me. Uh, so I don't want to be thinking about the the end result when I'm uh, when I'm painting here. Big chunky woody pencil uh, pencils here because I want to uh, make some uh, some expressive marks here in the sky and see how that looks. Remember, you can adjust these; they're water soluble. So if you make something you're not quite uh, happy with, you can go and uh, almost remove it using um, water on a clean brush and a paper towel. Actually, let me just show you that. I wanted to remove that thing or I wanted to remove 
this here I can just put water on there with a clean brush and dab it off so you can continually sort of adjust these expressive marks and I really like that uh, that fact because then I dare to be uh, very uh, loose and uh, expressive in the way that I'm I'm drawing because I know I can go back in and soften them or even removing them entirely Let me try with some of this pink color here. Maybe it's too much. Yeah, that's too much. I don't want that. Okay. Mm, this area up here is, or I don't want your eye to go there. I want to just soften this area up here and I just bring it like this. There we go. I'm going to remove the tape now and see how it looks because I uh, feel it's time to have a better look at what we got. These turned out uh, rather nice, I think. I definitely am satisfied with the, the colors and the. Um, Right now, I'm just feeling in the mood to make a whole series of these uh, using this color uh, palette. I hope this was uh, inspiring to you. I hope you feel like starting brave with big bold marks, uh, being open to being surprised, to see the opportunity that uh, arises when you do something uh, that you can't quite control, and then go in and uh, adjust those things uh, as they happen. Try and see your painting as a, as a journey um, instead of an end destination in, in sort of a finished product.